Everybody, this is Bo back in the lounge. Want to do a shout out to our 1.5 million listeners. Thank you so much from all over the planet. Keep sending your texts, your email messages to the guests that you want on. And right now, we're going to go out to Bryant University, talk to their head football coach, Coach Fine. Sir, thank you. Thanks, Bo. We're thrilled to be with you. Uh, Coach, uh, in a very short period of time, you're going to be able to contribute in the 1AA playoff. You've already achieved that in the D2 area, and uh, it's got to be impressive to see the growth of your program and the support you have from the alumni, the president, and just the fans. Well, we have a great program. Not everybody will know about us, but we're up in Providence, Rhode Island, and we have uh, a small liberal arts or small business college, about 4,000 students. And and we have great alums, and football's only 12 or 13 years old here. Uh, but in my short five or six years, we've been to the national playoffs twice. We won a couple of championships, and we made the move to 1AA from Division Two. And last year, we were 7-4 and four at our first year of that transition. That's the second-best record in the history of the NCAA for that transition, is what we were told. Yeah, I would say yes. Um, typically, when you make that giant jump, you wind up losing more than winning. And uh, obviously, with the style that you've put together on the offensive side and obviously defense to stop those teams, it has worked for you. We talked a little bit off air how you developed your um, your schemes, your setup. Uh, we saw it as an even attack, but we're going to let you share that. Well, you know, 30 years of coaching college football and having that chance to work for some really good coaches over the years, um, you, you learn a couple things. And the one word that, that really – identifies us as balance. Balance doesn't mean we're going to be 50-50, even though the numbers have worked out that way. Over five years, we've averaged about 400 yards uh, a game on offense, almost 200 running and almost 200 passing, almost exactly the same number. And uh, one year, we were within three yards of each other at the end of an 11-game season. So uh, what it means, though, is, is that we can run the ball. If you're going to go play nickels and dimes and all these exotic coverages people you know, have taken from the NFL, that we can line up and run it right at you and, and use our advantage in size and and our ability to run downhill. And if you're going to put extra people in the box, people talk about eight men in the box and all that stuff you hear on TV. If you're going to do that, we can throw it good enough that we'll advance the ball successfully. And and so people get into patterns defending you, and all of a sudden they say, okay, we're going to have to stop the run. And they put extra people in there, and all of a sudden you're throwing the ball at them because it's a numbers game, and, and we have a numeric advantage um, if they're going to try and single cover guys. Coach, so uh, balance is created by what the defense tries to take away, not by what we're trying to force. Uh, some teams, if you're very good, Oklahoma last year on offense or you know Florida on offense, they could just line up and beat you. Well, we're not that way, especially now. Uh, last year we beat five or six 1AA schools, and we didn't have a scholarship football player in our program. We did it because numerically our kids are very smart, and we can get into the right plays based on where you're trying to play us. Yeah, I was gonna. I was just gonna echo that. Is that you've got to have athletes that are smart enough to identify immediately the coverage that you're that you're involved in and looking at. You on the you have to have faith in the athletes to make the right decisions because when they step up to that line, if the call was wrong and they can clearly see it, they've got to be able to make changes. I see it in high school all the time. The, the call goes in and the players looking at the coach like, "Are you sure we're gonna run this play?" <laughs> and uh, it winds up as I a huge what, loss. I have a great whistle, Bo. Was they? I have a great whistle, and you can hear it anywhere. We, I coached the offensive line at Indiana University for a while. We had a quarterback named Antoine Randall L. And uh, Antoine was a great football player and a great, great football kid. He'd come in every day with a play on a napkin for me to look at. <laughs> we could be at Penn State or we could be at Michigan. It didn't matter. I could whistle. He'd look over, and we'd be able to change something right at the line. And because uh, you can hear it, it cuts right through the crowd. So here in these Division Two II and One Double games, boy, I whistle, and they get a pretty good correction at the line of scrimmage. So we have an advantage because I'm a good whistler. Well, I think you're better at fundamentals because it, it, it sounds <laughs> like it. And the reading we have is it, up here in Detroit, we're always talking sports, X's and O's. We're talking about the team, the recruitment class, and uh, we sit in discussions and talk about the fact that every team in college has good to great players. It's the coaches that really build out the fundamentals so the athletes are then pushed to the limits. And you've done that. What have you done to make sure your program is this? Because you mentioned the scholarship, the athletic scholarships are just not there. Um, you've done it purely with, uh, with kids walking up to your program saying, yeah, I want to play football, or you know, they've got the academics. And that, you know, if you look, listen to the media, that's not always how you're supposed to build it, but you've done it and been very successful at dominating. Well, I... The key to us is not the kids we're able to go recruit because other schools that we play have better athletes at the time they walk in the door. For us, it's the development of them, both in the classroom and in the weight room and in the conditioning room. Um, we think we can take our players and develop them 
faster and better than some other folks. And we think it's because we recruit really smart kids. And they understand their limitations and they understand about work ethic. And they're from really good families. And we've graduated every senior football player for five years. And that's because they understand that there's a world out there and that they need to be a productive part of the world. But along with that, they understand that for us to be good, we can't make a lot of mistakes. We're not going to be able to overcome mistakes with speed. We're not going to be able to overcome mistakes with brute size because we're overmatched in most games. And so uh, by recruiting the right kids, we can play to our strength, which is our smarts, which is our ability to be a better team than some others. Um, we talk every day about put your ego away. We don't care. Um, who plays or why they play, we're going to put the best kids in every spot. Last year we played 84 kids in a game. We played 92 in a game two years ago. So everybody has a role. We get a chance to play a lot of kids. So they're um, uh, they're energized by it. They practice hard because they know they're all going to play on Saturday. And, uh, and it seems to be working. You know, Coach, uh, when you first hear that, you're kind of taken back as, as a fan or as somebody who hasn't heard that before because you watch on Sundays and there's about 22 kids, maybe 30 at the most you've seen substituted. But if you have everybody playing their key role, you identified their strengths you know, correctly in the offseason. The players have come forward and told you kind of what their talents have been. You look at it and either make the you know, minuses or pluses on the athlete. You you can come up with a scheme where your team is always in shape, ready to go in the fourth quarter. Teams that tend to overplay their athletes because they are true athletes wind up losing in the fourth quarter. Um, I see it all the time at the high school ranks. I see it in the college ranks. The athletes come off the field and they're literally gassing because they're just they're so beat up and because they play both ways and special teams. You know, playing 80 guys to 90 guys, obviously you build a trust with the athlete, but. <laughs> I, bear, I bet you in the fourth quarter they're not gassing at all. Well, and that's the key for us is, you know, it will take a fresh young man who knows exactly what to do on a given play against someone who's tired, and all of a sudden that athleticism is evened out. And our kid's excited to be out there for his five, six, eight plays, whatever it is that he's been trained to do, and he does them well. And doing it well and doing it with excitement and doing it when you're fresh, to me, is the great equalizer in our sport. Because, just like you said, if you try to play 30 kids in a high school game and I play 50, I have an advantage in the fourth quarter. And everybody knows if two teams are even close, the fourth quarter is going to tell the tale. We've won 18 of our last 21 fourth quarters. And, and that, to us, is where we, uh, where we have some success. And we're really good at home. We're 19-2 and in our last 21 at home, Bo. And the reason is because now we have an unlimited roster size. When you travel with 60, it's sometimes hard to do all that. Uh, especially when you got to travel too deep on the offensive line. You know, some of those bodies aren't real uh, productive in the kicking game. But when we're at home <laughs> and we can put all our bodies out there, boy, we're tough to beat because we are fresh and fast in the fourth quarter. You know, Coach, uh, you, you talk about not having, you know, you got to have the, the – the fundamentals or the guys that I think, but you've got to be attracting the athletes because, you know, at your level of play, whether it's D2 or 1AA, you are going against guys that um, obviously teams that have playbooks, they've got athletes that are targeted, on, you know, have a target on their chest because they've been approached by the NFL. And for you to go in and bring a smackdown on them and run them in the fourth quarter, you've got to have some stars in that squad and you've got to have senior leadership that encourages guys on the field and obviously in the weight room where you're not able to go at times. Um, who are those guys that really come forward in your program that are solidifying? Because you've got a nice even of, of senior and freshmen right now. Well, that's the, the key to the, the big key to the whole thing is retention of student athlete. You know, we've lost two academic kids casualties in four years. And so we're able to keep our kids. Kids don't leave the program very often. Uh, last year we had a total of three out of 120 kids. So the reality of the circumstance is that we have more than 20 seniors every year and while their names change their role does not we spend a lot of time in the winter on leadership on the characteristics of leadership on how to lead on how to follow on how to take hard coaching all things that people just take for granted sometimes in this day and age not a lot of kids take hard coaching when they're freshmen very well and so <laughs> that's true we coach them hard we coach them fair we coach them hard though and uh, you know, we spend a lot of time on all those things so that when by the time the kids are seniors, they understand their role, they understand the leadership, and we have a, a great senior class again this year. Um, we thought two years ago the senior class would be very hard to beat. They played as, uh, we played 30 freshmen here my first year, and, and when those kids were seniors, boy, we were pretty good. And then the next year, you know what, we didn't drop off at all. We went out and won another championship, and we did it with kids that, 